was life on this planet created at the request of Benji Mouse? Okay, so that's an odd thing to ask. But I'm sure that there are some amongst you who will get the reference. For everyone else, all will be explained at the end of this video. Watching a number of videos on YouTube recently has got me wondering whether life, or at least human life, on this planet might actually be part of some great experiment. Now, I know that YouTube videos must, more often than not, be taken with an enormous pinch of salt, this one included, but they do make you wonder sometimes. Take the moon, for example. There are a number of truly staggering coincidences about the exact size and position of the moon, and about its orbit around the Earth. For example, the Sun is approximately 400 times larger than the Moon, and the Moon is approximately 400 times closer to the Earth than the Sun. This means that we get the incredible natural spectacle that is the solar eclipse, where the Moon exactly covers the Sun, leaving only a fiery magical halo then there is the orbit of the Moon. The speed of the revolution of the Moon about its axis is exactly the same as the rotation of the Moon around the Earth. In other words, the Moon rotates exactly once every time it circles the Earth, which means that it always shows the same side to the Earth and never varies. This is known as being tidal locked. And let's not forget the effect which the Moon has on this planet. One, which it has been argued, means that advanced life on Earth would simply not be possible without. The Earth's axis is tilted off its orbital plane. Currently it's tilted at 23.5 degrees, but over a 40,000 year cycle it wobbles between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. Now, as far as planetary bodies are concerned, this is very stable and astronomers have calculated that without the Moon, the planet's wobble would be as much as 85 degrees. Indeed, some suggest that the Moon itself is responsible for the tilt in the first place. Why is that important? Well, it's the tilt of the Earth's axis that gives us seasons. Without it, if the planet's axis was zero degrees to the orbital plane, then there would be no seasons. The equator would be a scorched wasteland, and the northern and southern hemispheres would be permanently covered in ice, leaving not much of the planet's surface for life to thrive. The stable tilt also means that our seasons are not too extreme, and are stable eon upon eon. And then there's tides. The moon's gravitational pull on the Earth is strong enough to tug the oceans into a bulge. That, plus the inertia caused by the Earth's own spin, gives us the phenomenon of the twice daily tides, which, it has been suggested, provided a mechanism which made the building blocks of life possible. But those are just a few examples of the oddness of the Moon, ones which are tied to the observable physics of the thing. There also exists a whole gamut of ideas that, taken together and at face value, might even suggest that the Moon is not an entirely natural object. For example, have you heard the Moon? Well, NASA has. When they sent men to the Moon in the early 70s, they carried out a number of experiments, including installing seismometers to measure moonquakes. When Apollo 12 deliberately crashed the ascent stage of its lunar module onto the Moon's surface, it was claimed that the moon rang like a bell for an hour, leading to the hollow moon hypothesis. Yes, there is a theory that the moon is not solid, but hollow. Of course, this has been widely rebutted, but there is further evidence to support this, such as the fact that the moon is not as dense as it should be, and that the craters are not as deep as one might expect. The composition of the Moon is another puzzle. Moon rocks and other samples returned to Earth by the Apollo missions have confirmed that the Moon has a far higher amount of titanium than the Earth, 10% compared to 1% found on Earth, and that there are processed materials found on the Moon like mica and brass which do not occur naturally on Earth. 
there is also the presence of radioactive elements, such as uranium-236 and neptunium, which are only found on Earth as byproducts of industrial activity. And then there are the many oral traditions from ancient peoples from all around the Earth, which tell of the time before the moon was in the sky, which lends credence to the idea that the moon might be artificial. Now, of course, the moon has been in the sky during the entirety of recorded history, but even as recently as the ancient Greeks and Romans, stories were told which might support this. Aristotle wrote that Arcadia in Greece was populated by a people known as the Pelagians, and that they occupied the land before there was a moon in the sky. Apollonius of Rhodes mentioned the same. When not all the orbs were yet in the heavens, and only the Arcadians lived before there was a moon. Now obviously this is just a lot of fanciful thinking, but just consider for one moment that if even a small portion of it is true, then the moon might not be the natural neighbour that we consider it to be. So, if we entertain that notion, then we have to ask, who put it there and why? Well, the who part is of course impossible to answer, unless we find a note from them explaining everything, or if they invite us to dinner. It has been suggested by others, the ancient astronaut theorists, that alien races have been meddling in the development of the human species for their own ends, to create a slave race to mine gold for them, or to create a race of genetic hybrids for some other nefarious reason. The stories of the Anunnaki from ancient Sumeria suggest such a thing, but Sumeria only goes back to about 4500 BCE, and the moon has definitely been around for a lot longer than that. To my mind, the fact that the moon is tidal locked and only ever presents one face to the Earth is far more interesting. If life on this planet is part of an experiment, then you would need to be able to view the Earth without fear of contaminating the process. A moon which revolved would make this more difficult, as your observation posts on the surface would not have a constant view. Also, you could hide all of your infrastructure, such as spaceports, etc., on the far side without fear of discovery. Of course, in an infinite universe, anything is possible. So, who is Benji Mouse? Top marks if you got the reference to the book, stroke radio program, stroke TV series, stroke disappointing film that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. In it, the Earth is demolished, supposedly to make way for a hyperspace bypass, and the main character, Arthur Dent, is one of the very last people to escape just before demolition. Benji Mouse is a pan-dimensional being who, along with its associate Frankie Mouse, commissioned the construction of the Earth as a massive computer to find the ultimate question, the answer to which, as we all know, is 42. And they asked Arthur over dinner if they could purchase his brain to see if it contained the result. As award-winning coastline designer Slarty Bartfast put it, uh, This business with the cheese and the squeaking is just a front. They've been experimenting on you. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click on the like button to tell YouTube that others might like it too. Please also subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon to be alerted to future videos.